My name is Dr. Kevin Chrisman. I'm a professor in the Nautical Archaeology Graduate Program at Texas A&M University. We're part of the Anthropology Department, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a program of seven professors who specialize in the history of seafaring and the archaeology of seafaring around the world, uh, from the very earliest seafarers uh, up to the 20th century. Uh, we carry out work on uh, the actual ships that, that transported people and goods and ideas around the world uh, from the ancient Bronze Age Mediterranean uh, up to ships uh, that w went up and down the Mississippi River uh, in the 19th century. Uh, this program has been at Texas A&M since 1976 uh, and is one of a handful of graduate programs in nautical archaeology or maritime archaeology around the world. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a rather specialized area, uh, but uh, there's the research uh, possibilities that are immense, and, and uh, for that reason, it's a terrific place to, uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be teaching. For my own personal master's research, I've been looking at the remains of a steamboat up in the Great Lakes that suffered a devastating boiler explosion in April 1850. Uh, the Anthony Wayne was actually making a routine run along the south shore of Lake Erie when one of its boilers exploded, engulfing the vessel in flames and sending it to the bottom of the lake. The remains of the ship were found in 2006, and since then I've been involved in, a pro in the project to document the remains of the steamer. So me and a crew of graduate students uh, visit the wreck over the summer. Uh, the wreck is situated in 50 feet of water, which means we have to don scuba equipment and go down to the site in order to record, draw, and photograph the wreck. Our major project right now is Heroin. It's a steam wreck, a steamship wreck in Oklahoma on the Red River. Uh, went down in 1838. The vessel was built in 1832. And most of the artifacts we have around here are uh, those that were excavated from this wreck when it, and it was completed uh, in the summer of 2008. Uh, this is sort of a sampling of what I have, uh, some of the nicer pieces. These have undergone conservation. You can see they're, they're still in pretty fragile shape, but it's very obviously a boot, and you can sort of imagine someone putting their foot into this and wearing this on a daily basis. Um, we also have sort of a sampling of the tools that aren't considered part of heroin's assemblage, but the things that people would have either personally owned or used. This is a, a hardwood mallet that at some point was split along its surface when it was used. Uh, and this has also undergone its treatment and been recorded so that we can send that along. Uh, we also find sort of an interesting mix of things. For example, one of the divers brought up the stirrup by itself. Uh, and then we also have everything from bits and pieces of ceramics, uh, medicinal bottles, beer bottles, uh, buttons, any sort of little thing that someone could have dropped during the wrecking event, which was when the boat hit a snag and then went down in the river. Um, so they were able to salvage a lot, which means that we don't have quite as much, but it also sort of makes it a fun puzzle to try and piece together what we do have. Chips are the largest moving objects that people build. Uh, and this is true today, it was true a thousand years ago. Uh, and it's also one of the most complex uh, technical undertakings that people have done through history and by studying these ships uh, we can really gain a much greater appreciation of what our ancestors uh, were able to accomplish in sailing around the world and uh, what their lives were like when they were off at sea for weeks at a time or living on the rivers of North America. Um, we, can, we can gain all of this uh, from our archaeological work.